Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at the set parameters Arduino example in a bit more detail. If you're wondering how we got to where we are, check out our earlier video titled Running the Magoonalink Set Parameters Arduino Example. We will start by looking at the Magoonalink interface. As mentioned in the previous video, we have the connection manager, which handles the serial connection. We have a monitor, which is displaying the raw serial messages received. In this case, you can see the introduction message, which the Arduino program sends in the setup function, and some messages sent back and forth to the Arduino when clicking the set and get buttons. And finally, on the left, we have the actual interface panel visualizer. This is a fully customizable interface, and in this case, it has a numeric up-down button and set and get buttons. If we now open the designer, which is the tool used to construct the interface, we can look at what the interface is doing. On the left are all the different interface elements you can use. To add them, you simply drag and drop the element onto your interface. If we now look at the turtle monitor interface, we can look at what's sent when the set and get buttons are clicked. If we click on the set button and then on the little arrow, we see a window showing the element's name, the text that is displayed to the user, and under communications we see what it does when the button is clicked. In this case, a message is sent starting with an exclamation mark, then the text set turtle count, then we fetch the number from the numeric control. In Magoonalink, this is done using square brackets. Inside we put the name in the numeric control, in this case num turtles, followed by a dot, then the property we want, in this case value. We finish the message by sending a slash r, which is the carriage return, non-printable character. The exclamation mark and carriage return are special characters used by our command handler to indicate the start and end of messages, respectively. Similarly, if we look at the get button, we see that we are sending an exclamation mark, followed by get turtle count, then the carriage return. In this case, we are requesting a number, so we do not need to include anything else in our message. If we jump back to our monitor, we can see that the messages sent when clicking these buttons inside the monitor match the protocol we just discussed. So now we will jump back over to the Arduino program to discuss how it works in detail. First up, we've included the Magoonalink and Command Handler libraries. We have created a variable named number of turtles, which we want to modify from Magoonalink. And finally, we have created our Command Handler object to process the serial messages. We now add our two commands that we want the command handler to process. This is done in the Arduino setup function by specifying a string with each of the commands and assigning a function to each of them that is called whenever the commands arrive. In this example, the command strings, as mentioned earlier, are set turtle count and get turtle count. And these are assigned to the functions cmd underscore set turtle count and cmd underscore get turtle count respectively. Now if we jump up the page, we can see the declarations for these two functions. Note the argument for each of the functions called parameters. This always needs to be present and is used to extract out numbers and strings which are sent from Magoonalink, such as the number of turtles parameter. Let's now look at the command underscore set turtle count function. Each time this is triggered by the command from Magoonalink, it assigns the number of turtles variable the value inside parameters. Note it is assigning this as an integer. There are also functions for grabbing the next parameters as a long, an unsigned long, and as a double. Now let's look at the command underscore get turtle count function. Each time this is triggered, it prints a response with the text number of turtles equals, and then it prints the number of turtles variable. In this example, we use the get source function to return the source of the command, in this case, the serial port. This is useful if using different sources, such as a software serial port. The final thing I'll mention is the command handler process function, which you can see here in the main loop. This is a very important function for making the command handler work. Every time around the loop, it pulls a serial character from the buffer and processes it. Once a full command is assembled, it executes the functions as discussed earlier. If this process function isn't called regularly enough, it will delay calling the command functions. Therefore, special care should be taken to minimize delays in the main loop as much as possible. This wraps up the video. Let us know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.